It's a beautiful morning in Florida, and we're on our way up to the Skyway Bridge. It's going to be a little time, about a two-hour drive, but not too bad. We have our live shrimp, and we're ready to go. It's our first time here, so I'm sure we're going to learn a lot from the anglers around here about what not to do. So stay tuned. Let's get started and subscribe. Good morning. Okay. Just two of us. Thank you so much. All right, we're out here on the Skyway Bridge. We haven't parked yet. We're looking for a place. This actually, uh, um, it's the old bridge uh, heading from um, over on Bradenton side to the uh, uh, St. Pete area. And uh, a lot of people come out here, they go fishing. Um, this is our first time out here. Um, so it's gonna be interesting. I don't know where to park. Um, there's people parked all over down here. Um, it's kind of like a line, but we'll find some place to park and and start fishing and see how well we do. I got some ladyfish here, beat up, some finger mullet, and some threaded herring. Over here. What's up, buddy? We got some shrimp in here. See it down there at the bottom? So we got some, I put some dead stuff in here. I got to throw away, you know, jumping around. But this is actually, this cooler is actually really good. Um, Cause I, sometimes I get the shrimp the night before and uh, I get it the night before and it stays alive the whole time. Um, but they do have a bait shop down here. Uh, you can get stuff at, but you can see there's a lot of people. So I don't know how much stuff they have left. So I got it just the night before, just to be sure. So now we're ready to roll. Uh, doing pretty good this morning. Not as best as I usually do, but yeah, that throw was actually pretty good. Oh yeah? I had just four throws before that. I didn't catch a single bait. This is all greenbacks? Or? Greenbacks. Yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, I work for Poseidon Fishing Charters. Uh huh. And uh, we're out, we're, we run out of Ruskin. We got seven boats and uh, I supply them with all their morning and their afternoon bait. Oh really? And then uh, like anything after, if I have any bait left over, if I if I go out an extra time, I sell to the Ruskin bait shops. Pretty nice when I can get them, get them good. Yeah. But uh, some days, like this morning, I was struggling out here. I just the the tide was going too hard. Uh huh. And uh, that's why I got two hand lines on my net, so it can actually hit the bottom. By the time I can pull it back in, if I have just one hand line, it won't even hit the bottom. Interesting. And, Interesting. Uh, if it don't hit the bottom. Nine times out of ten, you're not gonna get greenbacks. Just when you try to braille it in, they just they just sprint. Back. Yeah. yeah, and uh, even like the days when it's really really clear, if today's gonna be a really really clear day. Uh, if they're on top, instead of hugging the bottom, uh -huh. it's, they see the net coming, and then they and just I'll watch them literally just go into a circle, and the net will just fall right here. You know, <laughs> it's a single thing. But That's a big net. That's a nice net. Eh? Ten and a half footer. It's a it's a custom net. It's special made for me. Oh really? Yeah. And uh, yeah, this is this is what I do. Yeah, you got birds waiting for you. There you. I got I got a uh, an old net that I keep over my tank, so they can't get in there. They'll sit out. Oh really? Yeah, <laughs> That's... I, I, personally, I hate those birds. <laughs> Hopefully, I don't mess up. <laughs> I get I got to learn how to do this actually. Here's one of our first lessons. A uh, gentleman out here, he comes out here to get bait all the time, and he helped us understand um, what to do, what not to do. Um, as far as the ins and out of fishing around here, the bait fish, and everything like that, he was actually very helpful. Thank you so much. Good footage. Uh, there's lots of mackerel. Uh, lots of, um, uh, if you go out to the end, they've been getting good mangrove snapper out on the end. Oh, really? Uh, the pylons, if you can, they'll, they'll eat shrimp, but if you can get fiddler crabs, uh, the, the, the sheephead 
or oh really stacked up on the pylons right now like if you just kind of cruise down instead of sitting in one spot mm -hmm. kind of hop around and just look at all the pylons the ones underneath and you'll see them they'll be eating the barnacles right on the pylons uh-huh drop a shrimp down to them and they'll they'll eat it oh really yeah and uh yeah like i said the mackerel ladyfish have been pretty hot lately uh sheephead snapper I've seen a couple of gag grouper get caught off the pier. Not many, but uh -huh. they're they're here. And uh, tarpon, the for the last two weeks till now, like usually I see tarpon all over the pier. Oh really? Like two hundred pounders, dude. Oh. oh really? Big big ones. Can you eat the, those? No. Nah, no. Nah. You're not allowed to keep them. They're it's a it's a sport fish. Ah uh, okay. And uh, I brought my fishing pole out here one afternoon and brought one of my buddies. And we we started to catch bait. We got a few baits, and we started seeing tarpon. We were like, let's just fish. We got time. And uh, we hooked four in, like, ten minutes. Oh, wow. Oh. But they're so big, they just take off. And you're, they just... you're screwed. Under the bridge, they just cut you off. Nah. Uh -huh. Unless you're on a boat, you're, you're going to be real lucky to get a tarpon off the bridge. But they're here. Kingfish. They've been catching kingfish off the pier. Uh, I caught... Two baby barracudas in the net yesterday morning. Oh, really? Yeah, about that big. Little baby barracudas. So kingfish, they eat shrimp or? Uh, greenbacks. Greenbacks and thread fins. And they don't even have to be live. Just... I got thread herring. Yeah. So you toss that out on a cork. Have about three foot under your cork and just let them float. I don't have and a cork. No cork. Yeah. They should have some at the bait shop if y'all if y'all are going to spend the day here and stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, definitely get a couple corks and, like I said, toss some dead baits out. Do you need weight with the cork or just no? Nope. No, nope. just just the cork. Uh, uh, get your your main line. Uh, you want to use monofilament. Yeah, I have monofilament. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And uh, you know, line the line. A lot of people use uh, the the wire leader out here, but they can see it and they they know it. Oh really? They won't eat. So I line. do have a wire leader just because we went shark fishing last weekend. And... Yeah. Oh, oh yeah, for shark fishing. Yeah. For sure. They they don't care about a wire leader, but uh. Out here, mono to mono, and like a number two, number three circle hook, or J hook, whatever you have, and about three feet up the line, put your cork and send it out there with the tide and just let it sit, and it'll get eight. Oh, okay. So I can go down and get a cork down here, huh? You should, yeah. yeah. You should have plenty of corks and stuff. They, a lot of times they don't have bait. They don't have a good bait guy like me, but uh, they always have shrimp, and they always got lures and uh, stuff. If y'all want to catch... Spanish mackerel and stuff like that. They sell special lures in there for that. It's just a it's a lead lure and it's streamlined silver uh -huh. and it's got two treble hooks on it. Cast that thing out as far as you can, let it hit the bottom and reel it in as fast as you can. Do you use any weight with it? No, it's it's a I I'm pretty sure they're two ounces by themselves. We're right here. Can you look at my lures and tell me what yeah. these are good out here. Oh, the, okay. Uh, the mirror lures are really good. These both, all these mirror lures are good. It's just hard from when you're up on the pier to keep them, you know, subsurface. They, uh -huh. they, it just wants to come to the top and skip to the top. Yeah, that's. So I don't really use mirror lures out here. This bucktail, I would throw out. Like I said, the same thing is with them silver jigs. Uh -huh. As far as you can, let it sink, and just start jigging it back kind of as fast as you can, just a solid reel and jig at the same okay. time, and then mackerel will tear it up. Oh, that's good too. Yeah. Uh, you can, what I would do with this, because these are pretty light, is uh, if you got any crimp weights. Or, I, right, right there. Okay, cool. Put a couple just to weight it down on the front. Oh, just way down here? Right here, yeah. Ah, uh, okay. And then uh, just, like I said, sling it as far as you can and let that thing sink, and jig it and bring it back at a fast pace. At a fast pace? As fast as you're comfortable with, the mackerel, they go 100 miles an hour. You can't go too fast for that. Oh, really? Mm hmm Okay. And uh, they're really fun to catch. And you'll catch ladyfish and jacks, too, with these and that other, uh, that bucktail that you got in uh -huh. there. It's good stuff. So just reel it back as fast as I can? Mm-hmm. Cast it out. Let it sink. Reel it back. Jigging it at the same time, you know. Oh, jigging it, too. Jigging it. Reeling it. If you see it come to the top, just let it sink. Okay. Keep it coming. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, man. All right, y'all have a good day. You too. Thank you. Thank you for all the information, too. Not a problem. We had a thousand, like, like hundreds of bait fish right down there, and they could be taking the shrimp. I told her uh, we're going to go in between. If you look over this way, 
in between the bridges right here um there's pylons sheep head like to be around there snapper other fish too because they feed on the other fish so i told her told my wife to go drop the line over there see what we get over here i have a thread fin on and i have a green back on this um with a bobber it's under the bridge can't really see it right now but it's just kind of swimming around i put a 3-0 hook on on here a circle hook <clears throat> um so we're gonna give it a shot or she's gonna give it a shot and go over there and see what she gets because right now if we drop it on this side it seems like all the little fish are just kind of stealing the bait off the off the hook you drop it down it's pretty much gone it's like piranhas down there except for shrimp a little i don't know what it is i don't know either i don't know it's too small i can't keep it i know it's not a pinhead i just pulled this in look at it it's like they just stripped all the meat off that's pretty good they just left the bones this is my 8-0 hook i'm using it for bigger fish <laughs> <The world. laughs> yeah it's like they stripped it all off and <laughs> that's a first i've never yeah. seen that before <laughs> that's funny these little fish seem to take this the shrimp off really easy so what we're gonna do is we're gonna wrap it look 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 tattle tattle oh 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 oh, oh. Whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa. Something's got it. No, it's out here. It's away from the turtle. Whoa. Man, I don't know if it's stuck now. I don't know what I, I don't know if I, I have no idea. Something seemed to grab it, but it seemed like it got stuck on something. And uh, even though I thought it had something, I have nothing. All right, I caught this little pinfish earlier. I'm gonna use it for bait now. I'm gonna put it on, pull it through, kind of like I'm sewing. And then put it back to the gills like that. And there we go. And it's ready to go. So I'm just going to throw it out here. Hopefully, I've gotten some bites, but nothing, nothing substantial. We've gotten some small fish, but um, it's our first time here. So, you know, whenever you go someplace for the first time, it's different than what you're used to. Um, some places you go where they're the same. Some places are go, you're di it's different. And this place is different. We've got a lot of tips from people. Um, and you can see down there is a lot of bait fish. So you're in competition with what you're throwing out with all those guys down there. So we're trying, hopefully we'll get something. We, some guy got a grouper down there. So there is some hope. We'll keep trying. So what we learned is, uh, Normally, most people don't use shrimp out here because all the little bait eats the shrimp, like the pins, uh, as we were talking about earlier. And uh, they use uh, spoons, floats with a spoon to catch Spanish mackerel out here. We just saw somebody uh, catch Spanish mackerel. Now, I don't know if they use greenbacks or spoons, um, but definitely he said that most people out here don't use shrimp just because the smaller fish will eat all the shrimp. And you'd be left with nothing, just like we were. So it's one thing we learned. So next time we come here, it will be without shrimp. So when you come out here, it's $4. I believe it's $4 per person, but if you have two people, it actually costs more. So I think the total cost for us was like $12.95 to get out on the pier, uh, but that's for the whole day. So if you don't wanna pay it, don't come here, but they do charge you to come out on the pier. And on top of that, it's on the toll road. So you get the toll and then you have the pier. They do have a bait store out here on the pier. Uh, it's right here. And uh, sometimes they'll run out of bait. If you are coming out to get shrimp, which I don't recommend, um, they may run out of shrimp fairly quickly. 
but they have other frozen bait they have greenbacks like i said a lot of people use greenbacks if you miss something you need some hooks some weights um other stuff they have it here uh, also restrooms so we're done here for the day but five things i want to that i really learned when i came out here because every place you go that's new um it's always something slightly different so one shrimp the bait fish are going to eat your shrimp so unless you're going to use the sabiki rig and use shrimp on that to catch bait fish don't bring live shrimp two a net unless you have an extra person to help you with bait fish of getting net um you can pull up 100 pounds worth of bait fish and you're going to need help Three, watch your poles. Always watch your poles. You saw mine always almost get pulled in. Luckily, I caught it. At another place, I didn't catch it in time, and it went into the water. But we got it back, thankfully. Four, if you want to catch, or if you want to try to catch mackerel, Spanish mackerel, use a spoon. 95% of everybody out here typically uses spoons. And the last is float. Bring a float. A lot of people you'll see using balloons. I don't recommend using balloons. Use a float with a two and a half, uh, three foot uh, lead on the end uh, with a live fish. If you remember those things, good fishing out of the Skyway Bridge.